Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover of the Swift Contiki 596 Grand Prix Edition. So as we start the walk round on the driver's side of the vehicle first, the first point you get to is where you'd hook the vehicle up for either charging at home or when you connect to electrics on site. So you get your hookup lead, lift the collar, hook the motorhome up first, then hook the other end to the site or home for charging just so that you're not walking around with a live lead. Here you have your fresh water intake so what you'll need to do is go and grab yourself a hose pipe with some hose pipe connections as it's mainly just a brass tap on site. We've got a small key here that opens and unlocks this cap. Pop the flat end of the hose in there and then connect the other end of the hose to the tap and fill it until it either overflows or until you're happy you've got enough water on board which you can see on your main control panel. But should you not be able to get a hose pipe to the vehicle, you can bring a container of water to the motorhome or an aqua roll. Connect your wheel pump in here, this gives a power flat end into there and drop the pump into the water and it will suck the water into the main fresh tank. Here you have your wet locker, so you can store all your hookup leads, leveling ramps, all your bits and pieces in there. You'll also notice you've got your external shower point in here, which connects just on there. And it's a cold water feed, so as soon as you put the pump on inside the motorhome, you'll be able to have a cold water fed shower point for hosing the dogs off, the bikes, the boots. Underneath in this locker, this is your cassette toilet. So again, using the Swift key, you can open locks. And to get the cassette out, all you need to do is lift the orange handle, slide the cassette out of the vehicle. You can either carry it or you've got a handle and some wheels so you can wheel it to your waste disposal point on site which is normally beside your toilet block and then to empty it, remove your grey cap press the button when emptying it empty the content of the cassette out once you've done that, pop some water in give it a rinse, tip out again and then you go in with a cap full which is 120ml of chemical into the cassette with a little bit of water and it's good to go back into the motorhome and be used. Behind the back wheel you do have your waste water outlet point. So these are all electronic dumps so there's a switch inside the vehicle on the control panel but normally what you would do on the way out of your site is drive over the grid Press the switch and deposit all your waste water, which will be shower water, hand basin water, dishes water, or anything that you've drained off via a plug hole. Here you have your under storage of the U shaped lounge. So you've got your carpets in there your own winding handle, your rafter bar, your hookah blades and you also do have some tethering points for tying larger items down stop removing when you're travelling and on the back of the motorhome you've got your high level brake light your twin lens rear view and reversing camera your rear parking sensors along the bottom and you've also got a Thule bike rack which takes two bikes you just pull that down, you can adjust these along the rail depending on how big your bikes are and then you pop these through the spokes to tie the wheel down onto the chock and this would go through the last bike which is the second bike crossbar and that would go through your first bar crossbar.
and then we do advise you to put some sort of bike security lock around the bike frame and the bikes just to keep them safe when they're on the back of the motorhome. Same garage area as the other side, you've got access both sides. An external 230 volt socket, so should you want power in your awning or you've got an electronic barbecue, as long as you're hooked up, you can connect to there and use the power outside the motorhome. Two fridge vents, you've got your dual omnister awning and awning light. And you've also got an external gas point. So should you be wanting to use a gas barbecue, you can connect here and it will use the bottles on board the vehicle instead of carrying an additional bottle inside the van. All you need is a quick release connector, a length of gas, rubber orange hose, two jubilee clips to connect both ends to the barbecue and the quick release connector and then you turn your grey tap on and that will allow the gas through to your barbecue or awning heater. Aldi vent there so that will work when operating on gas obviously it does work on electric as well but just make sure when it is operating on gas it's got clearance around it and it's obstruction free and then at the front this is your LPG locker so in here we put our test bottle on so you can get two 13 kilogram bottles in this locker and to connect the bottle it's very simple so it's left hand thread with it being gas so this is what's known as the pigtail which connects from the regulator to the bottle. Left hand to tighten, right to loosen and then you'll need to get yourself a gas spanner like mine or an adjustable wrench. Nip it up, you'll be able to then turn the bottle on. Press this button for three seconds which will turn this to green. This would have been red because obviously it means that there's no gas on. That'll go to green by press and holding this for three seconds and then you'd press and hold should this pop out you'd press and hold for approximately five seconds so that pushes in and stays in the regulator there and it'll allow the gas through into the motorhome at the passenger door you do have your fuel so fill in with diesel you'd use your main ignition key and it's a lockable cap and then underneath you've got AdBlue so the AdBlue tank on a Fiat Ducato is 19 litres it'll do a full five and a half thousand mile off a full 19 litres of AdBlue once you've used four and a half thousand miles of AdBlue and you've got 1500 left you'll get the warning on the dashboard which will come between the fuel and the temperature gauge and it just lets you know, it looks like an exhaust light that it's now time to fill up with AdBlue which you can buy on either the pump or you can buy in the drums and you can top it up you'll know when it's full because the AdBlue will overflow but your tyre pressure's here, so 5.5 bar which is 79.5 psi and you'll also notice on both sides, driver and passenger, you've got heated seats so these are your heated seat switches Engine batteries underneath the floor. Toolkit is underneath the passenger seat, which is just here. And your bonnet release is on the side of the dashboard. So underneath the bonnet, to the far left hand side, you've got your screen wash, which is the main one you're gonna need. So that's where you top your screen wash up. Remove the four tabs and you'll be able to fill your power steering fluid up, your coolant and your brake fluid. You've got your oil and your oil dipstick for checking your levels every now and again. And then should you ever need to jump start the motor home, this is your earthen point, so this is where your black clip would go. And then between the air filter and the fuse box behind the passenger headlight, if you pop your key in here and lift this cover up you've got a positive terminal for giving or receiving a jump start so above the habitation door when you come into the motorhome you have your swift control panel so by pressing the swift logo here this is your master switch 
So this will turn the motor home on and off. So it'll kill all power or put the power on when you come in. When you're hooked up, you'll notice you're hooked up because you'll get this little light here saying it's charging and then you'll see the battery status of the leisure battery and the vehicle battery. You'll also see the internal and external temperature along the top with the time and the date. Should we starting from the left hand side to the right hand side you've got your pump here so you can turn your pump on and off which you'll need to have your pump on to work your taps toilet and shower but make sure you do have enough water on board which I'll show you how to check going through this panel here you do have your awning light so that's just the light on the outside of the motorhome which you can turn on and off here you've got your lighting which are dimmable by going up and down plus and minus and then you've got switches all around the van to turn your lights on and off you've got your power so you can view the battery status of the leisure and the vehicle battery obviously when we are hooked up you'll always get a false reading with the leisure battery so take the hook about and it'll show where the battery is currently sitting at and what Amage is currently coming off the leisure battery. Note that your solar panel does go to sleep as well when you're hooked up because your hookup is your bigger voltage. Take the hook about and you will get the solar panel will kick back in and charge your leisure battery. And the battery selected always wants to be the leisure battery. If that's saying vehicle battery, just change it to leisure as the leisure battery is designed to work the motorhome side, the caravan side of the vehicle you don't want the vehicle battery running all your lights because you may flatten it your water so you can view your fresh and your waste water so you can see there we've got 25% of fresh on that'll go all the way up to 100% and zero waste and along the bottom you've got tank heaters so you can turn your tank heaters on if you're away in the winter and it's going to drop below freezing overnight that'll stop the water in the tanks bolted to the chassis underneath the motorhome from freezing you've got level alerts so you can turn that on so when it gets so low the panel will start beeping just to let you know that your fresh water is low and it's time to refill as a safety feature but you can turn that on and off you've got frost alerts so when the, temp when the panel notices that the temperature's dropped Again, it will beep on telling you to turn your tank heaters on or drain your vehicle off. And then you do have empty your fresh and empty your waste. So you can just press these electronic dumps. You'd empty your fresh if you've taken on contaminated water or you drain it down for the winter where you want to leave no water within the motorhome. And you'd empty your waste before you leave your site and in the winter to stop the water from freezing if the vehicle's not being used. We've got heating here so you can choose your heating but I'll not complicate it. We'll do the heating through the Aldi panel. And you've got your fridge, you can do your fridge through here but I'll show you how to operate the fridge by itself. It's exactly the same on the fridge as it is on the control panel. Also above the habitation door, you've got your Aldi panel. So this is the heating and hot water. So to turn this panel on and off, you press the left hand button. It'll go through its cycle and then you'll get this screen here. So this will show all the time and it's telling you that at the moment, the temperature inside the van is 26 and a half degrees. You hooked up and that's the inside temperature. If you go to the menu, The picture of a th thermometer in a house this is how hot you want the inside of your motorhome to be so at the moment we haven't got the heating on we've got it to five degrees but you can turn it all the way up to 30 degrees by just pressing and holding the plus or the minus and that'll start heating the vehicle to the temperature that you've selected Underneath you've got the picture of a shower head. This is hot water. So should you have no water on board or you don't want hot water, you'd have it so that the bar is completely blank. 
If you want the hot water and the heating to run together, just have it on half a bar. That means that it's not on boost. The hot water and the heating are going to work together. Whereas if you have it on full bar, it's on boost and it's going to turn the, the heating off of the vehicle and prioritise the hot water first. <clears throat> Underneath you've got a picture of an electric mark. So if you were on a site, you'd use electric to heat your vehicle and your water because you've paid your site fees, why would you want to waste your gas? So you can either have it on 1 kilowatt, which is 750 watts you have it on 2 kilowatts, which is 1500 watts or you can have it on 3 kilowatts Check with your site what they want you to run because it all depends on the amperage they give you Normally on 16 amp you can use 2 or sometimes 3 kilowatts Sometimes if you're on 12 amp you may have to only use 1 kilowatt and if you're going to take it abroad Sometimes the sites abroad are a bit stingent with the electric, so you may have to use one kilowatt. If you're wild camping though, you can use the gas. So make sure you've turned your gas bottle on and all you need to do is push the gas flame here till it goes green and that'll use the gas to heat your water or your vehicle. And again, you can use the gas and electric together should you be away and it's really cold and you don't want to sit in a cold motorhome. Gas and electric together on two kilowatts and gas you probably have a warm motor home within 10 minutes. Once you've got the van up to temperature, turn the gas off and allow the electric to continue to heat the motor home. You can also go into settings, so should you ever get a problem with it, saying it's overheating or anything like that, or it's faulted for any reason, you can go into settings and scroll all the way down and you can reset your system. Sometimes you may just have to do this because it's glitched from time to time, but that's how you would do it and then you turn your panel back on and select the temperature, your water and the energy source that you want your water or your vehicle to heat off. Next to the Aldi panel you've also got your electric bed switch. So you've got a key here so you can isolate this switch should you wish. Make sure you've put it to unlock and then you just press this button here and you can drop down your electric drop down bed You'll also notice you've got a seat belt on this one. Just take that off as well before you press the switch, otherwise you'll not be able to drop the bed. You may want to just remove the, pit, the cushion as well, the backrest here, if you want to bring it down lower. This backrest does get in the way. Or you can leave it at any height, pop your ladder on here, and if you're putting kids up here, you've got safety nets which clip into these toggles in both corners just to stop them from rolling out and you've also got a light switch on the front skylights around for a light above the bed so to make your front dinette your double dinette into a bed this is how it would all assemble so you've got your base cushions which we've turned upside down because you get a flatter surface to sleep on if you're sleeping on the backs instead of the front being leather and then you've got a back cushion here very similar to that where this little infill cushion goes into the middle along with two other infill cushions which is this one here and this one which you can find in the wardrobe but what you would do is you would slide Up. and this will slide back into position as a seat go there and you'll notice to bridge the gap you'd use the table which is the table which clips on to here so you've got a foldable leg by just pressing the button in here folding the leg and then this would just clip on to the reel and the dinette in your back lounge at the back of the vehicle so to make the back bed all you need to do is slide the two together use the base cushions upside down and pop the backrests upside down at the back which gives you a full length double bed across the width of the motorhome so underneath if you lift 
and the back lounge up. The base cushion, you've got your sliding rail with your drop down leg for support. So when putting the bed out, slide it out, drop your leg down and it'll look like this when it's out in position. So in the kitchen area, you do have three gas burners along with one electric hot plate. So make sure, do be careful when you hook the van up that your electric hot plate's turned off because there's nothing to tell you that it's on. It'll just work as soon as you connect to mains 240 volt. So that'll work when you're on mains and then make sure all of them are cool enough to touch before you put the glass lid down. Otherwise there is a chance you could shatter the cooker top. Underneath you've got your grill. So there's your grill working and under your grill you do have your oven. You may just want to take your grill pan and oven shelves out when travelling or wrap them up as they can cause a little bit of rattling when on the road. Underneath here you've got your plug for your electric hot plate which just plugs in here and some storage. Large drawer there with the cutlery tray built in. Storage in here, but if you lift this compartment, this is where your boiler is. So you've got an Aldi boiler in there, and it's very important that you drain it down. So just locate it just here. There's a little orange toggle tap, which is your boiler drain in the winter. So when you're not using it, what you want to do is you want to lift that yellow tap up so it stands on end. That'll allow all the 10 litres of water that's in this boiler to drain off underneath the motorhome. You would then leave that open during the time it's either stood on the drive, not being used, or in a storage yard with all the taps throughout the motorhome open. So kitchen, shower, hand basin you'd leave open, fresh waste outside you'd drain off, and then that'll stop any water from potentially freezing and causing any damage to the pipelines and the appliances in the motorhome. Then when you come to reuse it, obviously shut the boiler first, shut all your taps, shut your waste, shut your taps within the motorhome, fill the vehicle with cold water via a hose pipe. Once you've done that, you can then turn the pump on on the panel and go to the cold side of the tap first. You'll get a pressurised flow of cold water straight away. Once you start moving to the hot, it'll start coughing and spluttering until you get a free flow of water from the hot side. This is when you know that your system's primed. But make sure that you drain the water out of your, your boiler and all your other tanks in the winter because it's not covered under warranty and it's a very costly mistake to make. But that's where your boiler is, just in here. So you just lift this wooden panel off and you've also got your gas taps to the left hand side which are just located here. So any problems with gas, you can turn it off and your drain valve is just right down here on the left hand side of the boiler. In the cupboard above your sink you do have your racks for your cups and your plates and you've also got your mains power cable for your microwave so it is 800 watt you've got to be hooked up for that to work but should you ever need to replace it in years to come you can just unplug it lift the microwave out and put a new one in when the pump's on you'll be able to Open the tap and you'll get a pressurised flow of water. And this is on the hot side, so that water has been on and that is really warm. So your hot water system's working fine. Blackout blind and fly screen. Tilt the grey clip to depart the two and push the buttons in to open your window. Push it out, 
to bring it back in as it's got stays on so it'll keep the window out in stages. Solar panel regulators on the top there so that'll just flash away and do its own thing and you've got some storage. But to operate your fridge, which you can open any way you want, so it's a double hinge door, you turn on the fridge here, so press and hold this button, it is a flush panel, so just press and hold to turn on and off. Auto, it'll mean it'll choose its own source, so the source you have available, it'll always pick the best one of the three. So if you're hooked up, it'll go to hook up first. It doesn't matter if you've got your gas switched on or off. Hook up takes priority. If you were to unhook the vehicle, it would switch over to gas. Or if you were to start the vehicle's engine, it would switch over to the battery setting, which isn't off your leisure battery. It's off the engine of the vehicle. It's got to be turned on, but it's got to be pre-chilled beforehand because otherwise the battery setting's not going to do anything. It's like a cool box. You've got to plug it in beforehand, then you can put it on the 12 volt and it'll keep it cool in the car. So auto will do its own thing. Or what you can do is you can press mode and change the source yourself. So it's failed on battery there because it's got no 12 volt because the vehicle's not running. You can put it on a gas. But please note with the gas setting, it does wait 20 minutes on automatic before lighting on gas once the engine's turned off. This is solely because it's a safety feature because if you've left your gas bottle open, you've turned your engine off, you're going to fill with diesel. Last thing you want is waiting in a queue at a petrol forecourt and your fridge trying to ignite on gas. So if you are while camping, you will just have to put on a manually gas for the first 20 minutes before turning back to auto and it going on to gas. Here is the temperature, so 1 being the warmest, 5 being the coldest. If you are pre-chilling and you're lucky enough to keep this at home, buy an adapter, plug it into the house, hook the van up a few days before so it gives it a good chance for the leisure battery to charge to full capacity. Put your fridge on, allow that to chill and then the night before go and put your shopping in. Once you put your shopping in though, turn it down to 3 or 4 maximum, but when it's got nothing in, have it on 5 because it will bring the temperature of the fridge down a lot quicker. And then one last thing with the fridge, you want to leave the door open when the fridge is turned off and not in use to stop the rubber seal from trapping the air in the fridge and causing any smells within your motorhome. So in your washroom, You've got your shower cubicle here, so you've got a large separate shower cubicle which has got two turnbuckles on the top and the bottom. So one on the top here, one on the side, just to keep the shower screen tied back when travelling. But like I was saying when winterising, what you'll also want to do is just unscrew your shower head from the hose and lie the hose in the tray to stop any coiling of any pipes and any water sitting and potentially breaking your shower pipe. Leave your taps open and then when cleaning the shower cubicle always use a mild residue such as a, so a dish soap or a, and a light microfiber to clean so you know, don't use any bleaches because you can discolour your white shower cubicle. And to operate your toilet, you've got a blue button on here, which is your flush. So make sure your pump's on. So you'll be able to press and hold and flush the toilet. Once you've flushed the toilet, you don't want to use it until you've opened the blade because it lubricates the seal. So there's a blade handle on the front, which is this grey handle here. You want to push it away from you. It'll open the blade. You'll see straight into the cassette. You can now use the toilet. Once you've used the toilet, you give it a good flush and, and then close the handle back towards you which will mean if the handle is open the cassette won't come out, if it should the cassette will come out the side of the vehicle and when it is ready to change the cassette you'll get a few lights underneath the diagram of the cassette here just indicating that it's full as it goes up in stages as it's got a float in there and it's ready to be taken out, emptied Topped up a chemical and popped back in the vehicle. Light switch is just underneath here and you've got a handy shelf there. Toiletry cabinet. And then this side you do have 
hanger reels for towels, toilet roll, toilet, a towel reel, radiator there, and you've also got some storage underneath your hand basin. So underneath your side bench seat, just behind the passenger seat, if you take your cushions off, you'll get access to your power supply unit, which is a sergeant unit, which is an AC600 unit. So on the stickers at the back, it gives you all the list of the 12 volt fuses. So do carry some spares, the ratings and what they do, which are all in here, listed one to 13. And then you've got this side, three, MCBs and a main trip tester. So should you be struggling for power and you want to eliminate that it's not the motorhome, try and test and trip the van out. If the van doesn't trip out, it's not the motorhome, it's the site. You've also got your leisure battery in here, so there's your leisure battery with your main 30 amp breaker fuse there. So you may want to just carry one of them just in case you probably never use it, but just just for the safe side of carrying one. And your leisure battery is in this concealed battery box here. So now in the cab, as this is an automatic, when you select reverse, you'll hear the beep of the parking sensors. You'll see the back of the motorhome on the rear view camera. So that's the reversing camera. And if you pop it back into drive, you get a different view. So as you can see there, you can't see the bike rack now. You can see a lot further behind you and this is your rear view camera.